in gene cloning introduction of vectors into host is an important step and when one uses uh, bacteriophages or, or viruses as vectors cloning vectors then uh, the way by which the introduction of this viral vectors happens is by a process called as transduction in this session we are going to focus on generalized and specialized transduction so let us look at the learning outcomes of the session transduction is a phenomenon of horizontal gene transfer with viruses as the vectors so it could be a lambda bacteriophage it could be an m13 phage it could be sv40 for an animal cell or it could be a colimovirus uh, for um, plants so basically viruses are commonly used biological vectors for uh, gene cloning now generalized transduction is mainly observed when the viruses enter the lytic cycle and during packaging the host dna may also get packaged into the protein coat of the viruses specialized transduction is a consequence of the virus integrating and then getting excised from the chromosomal dna now in the process of integration and excision it may be possible that while excision the viral dna also takes up the dna from the chromosome and therefore that is what is understood by specialized transduction this process enables genetic exchange between bacteria in which the viruses have multiplied and the bacteria which are to be infected by the viruses so it is basically a genetic exchange between one bacteria to another bacteria but the mode is through viruses that is the general understanding now the discovery of uh, uh, conjugation led to the discovery of transduction so in 1946 lederberg and tatum actually discovered conjugation and when they continued to work on the same lines in 1951 lederberg and zinder were carrying out recombination studies using salmonella so when they were doing conjugation they actually used e coli but when they uh, went on in 1951 they were doing recombination studies using salmonella and they mixed two variants of salmonella or mutants of salmonella and the mutants were oxytrophic so two oxytrophic strains when they were mixed then they gave rise to a prototrophic strain so this experiment was very similar to what they observed when conjugation was discovered exactly the same lederberg and tatum that that time had went on to carry out another simple experiment using a specially designed uh, a tube which was called as the u tube and the u tube contained a fine filter between the two arms of the u tube one arm contained one strain and the other arm contained the other strain now when they were studying conjugation the fine filters would not allow bacteria from each of the arm to move into the other arm and so there will be no contact of strain a with strain b and in conjugation it was observed that if the strain a does not get in touch or is not in contact with strain b then what not one would not observe genetic exchange or one would not observe gene recombination so therefore it was concluded from that experiment that it is essential for strain a and strain b to be to come in contact with each other in order to have the formation of the prototrophic strain but interestingly in this experiment which they carried out with salmonella what they observed was that when they grew this when they took when they collected strain a from this arm and they collected strain b from this arm ideally because of the presence of the filter strain a would still remain a mutant and strain b will also remain a mutant so when they are grown in minimal media they would not go grow that is because strain a doesn't get in contact with strain b and so they do not have an exchange of genes happening which would lead to formation of a wild type so the wild type would definitely grow on minimal media that is the understanding now in this experiment carried out by lederberg and zinder with the youtube when they took 
strain A and plated on a minimal media or when they took strain B and plated on minimal media, what they observed was highly interesting because they found that recombinants were recovered from the YouTube experiment too, which means that when strain A was grown on minimal media, some of the colonies grew and strain B also when plated on minimal media, some of the colonies grew. The indication of that is that something from one arm of the U-tube must have got into this tube while something from this may have got into this. And that's the reason why you would have some exchange happening. Now, when they studied further, what they found is that the size of the... the so, they, uh, so, basically... Uh, tried to study the size of the pores. So they kept decreasing the size of the pores and they found that uh, when the size of the pore became small enough to not allow P22 as a bacteriophage to pass through the filter, in such conditions you would not get recombinants. So ideally the uh, fact that is being said is that if there is a virus present over here and if the pore size is uh, not less enough to not allow the P22 virus to go to the other arm, you would find recombination happening. But suppose the size of the pore is lesser than the size of the P22, then you would not find recombination happening. So therefore, the recombination in case of the experiment with, sal with salmonella, salmonella, the conclusion was that it is a virus particle that is enabling genetic exchange. And therefrom, the concept of transduction came into existence. So, when you have a DNA transferred from virus into a host, then that phenomenon is what is called as transduction. Now, let us look at what is generalized transduction. So, say for example, you have a lambda phage, okay, and the lambda phage, once it is infecting a host bacteria and say for example we assume that the host bacteria has several genes of which one of the genes is a plus and the other gene is b plus now when you have the virus infecting the bacteria and going into lytic cycle one of the obvious things happens is that their genome or their dna is going to multiply so what you see in pink over here is the viral dna multiplying those viral DNA are transcribed and translated to form the coat particles, okay? And then what is observed is when you have the coat, when you have the assembly of the virus particles to happen, towards the end of the lytic cycle, you will also find that the chromosomal DNA, that is the host DNA of the bacteria also is lysed into smaller fragments as you can see. Since we try to consider A plus and B plus, you can see that here this fragment has A plus and this fragment has B plus. Now, once you get the uh, replicated viral DNA and what you also have is small fragments of the host DNA, while the DNA is getting packaged into the heads of the lambda phage, there is a possibility that other than the lambda DNA, uh, DNA itself getting packaged into the uh, 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 phage particles, you may also have sometimes the DNA of the host getting packaged. So as you can see over here, uh, when you have the cell getting lysed and you have the bacteriophages released, these three phages are the phages that contain viral DNA. But you can see over here that you may have phages that also carry the host DNA because the host DNA had, had uh, you know, um, got disintegrated into smaller fragments and one or two of the smaller fragments may have uh, got packaged into the head of the bacteriophage. So, say, suppose this phage which carries the bacterial DNA, okay, infects another host bacteria and interestingly, this host bacteria is a mutant for A. Now, because it's a mutant for A, you would have certain sequences only in the gene slightly different. But overall, there will be a lot of homology between the A plus and the A minus. So, when this bacteriophage carrying, say, for example, A plus 
injects the DNA into the host bacterium, then due to homologous recombination, the A- minus can be exchanged for A+. Plus. And so the transduced bacteria will now contain A+, plus, where it did not have A+, plus or it had the mutant A+. So this is something that can happen due to generalized transduction. Now, you must understand that normally this would not happen or it would be very rare. So it is observed that a very small minority of phage progeny, 1 in 10,000, can carry, carry the host genes. Otherwise, it will carry its own genome. Okay. Now, interesting therefore is that when the host DNA is lysed and there is random packaging happening, any of these host fragments can get within the uh, head of the or within the protein coat of the phages. So any host marker genes can get transduced. And so it is random and therefore it is called as generalized. There is no specific gene that is going to get packaged. Any of the host DNA uh, gene can get packaged and therefore it is called as generalized transduction. Now we go to another thing that has been observed with transduction and that is called as specialized transduction. This form, uh, form uh, this way, way by which transduction happens is dependent on the fact that many viruses get integrated into the host genome. So let's say for example consider that the host genome has been introduced into the chromosomal DNA but the host genome has integrated specifically between the gal gene of the host and the bio gene of the host. So you must understand now this concept that the recombination of the, uh, of the viral DNA into the host DNA is at a specific locus. It is always between gal and bio. So this is the condition. So once it gets integrated and if the environment is conducive, then the viral DNA can get excised out from the host DNA. So if the looping while the excision has to happen is proper, then you have genetic exchange happening such a way that the excision leads to only excision of the viral DNA and the host DNA is as it was earlier, that is intact. However, there are possibilities where when the excision happens, the looping is not proper and because the looping is not proper, the excision will happen in such a way that the excised viral DNA is not proper, it is defective because it now carries a part of the host DNA. And of course, the part of the host DNA that it is going to carry is going to be the most adjacent gene that is present. And since it had integrated between gal and bio, it can either take gal or it can either take bio. So you can see how gal gene is now present between within the uh, excised viral DNA. And in, uh, in the process of doing so, it also leaves behind a part of itself in the host genome. So which means that when you look at both the DNA, that is this DNA that has excised out and this DNA that is present over here, the host DNA is also now a recombinant and the viral DNA is also recombinant because there has been exchange of genes. It means that the th gene 3 of the virus DNA is with the chromosomal DNA of the bacteria and the gal gene of the bacteria is with now the viral DNA. So therefore, this DNA is called as lambda defective gal phenotype. So lambda phage inserts specifically in between gal and biogenes. On excising first from the host genome, there are possibilities of excising out adjacent host genes and leaving behind viral genes. As you can note over here, it forms lambda defective gal or lambda defective bioparticles. And the gal, therefore, from the initial bacteria can be transferred to another bacteria. So when this viral DNA is packaged into lambda, lambda phage particle and that lambda phage particle is going to infect another bacteria, then the gal of this bacteria can get transferred to the other host bacteria that now the phage particle is going to infect. So you can see how there is exchange of DNA happening and because it carries a gene adjacent to its site of integration 
it is called as specialized transduction. So we know that it is either going to be either gal gene that is going to be excised out or it is going to be the bio gene that is going to get excised out, not any random gene of the host. So that's the reason why it is called a specialized transduction. So let us look at the conclusions. Transduct transduction is therefore the transfer of genetic material from viruses into host organisms or cells. Generalized transduction is when the virus enters lytic phase, wherein the host DNA also gets sliced into fragments and one or more of the fragments can be packaged into phage heads or the coat proteins. Specialized transduction requires the virus to enter the lysogenic phase or to get integrated into the host genome and on getting integrated when it gets excised out okay uh, it gets excised out and integrated only at a specific locus the integrated phage or virus when excises out then it can carry an adjacent gene of the host genome thereby transferring a gene from host a into host b so transduction which is again another horizontal gene transfer phenomenon has been found to be a good methodology using viruses as vectors to transfer DNA from one host to another host bacteria. Thank you.